Hello, this is Dan Farisi, Editor-in-Chief with Commercial Integrator. So happy to be joined this afternoon by Dan Smith, who is Vice President of Business Development for LG Business Solutions USA. Thanks so much, Dan, for taking some time with, to chat with me. I really appreciate it. Pleasure being here. So we're going to talk about something that obviously you and LG are uh, world-renowned experts in, which is display technology and the evolution of display technology and what we can be excited about in the future. We're going to be talking about LCDs, OLEDs, LEDs, all these different technologies. But just to start at the 10,000-foot level, what would you say are some of the most important evolutions and progressions that you've seen in the last couple of years or something that you might have your eye on for the future that makes you particularly excited about display technology? Well, the fun thing about it is you can't always predict what's going to happen. As we continually evolve the technology itself and the manufacturing process, we find that there's attributes for all the technologies. So if we look at LCD, OLED, LED, they all have their own attributes and they're all progressing at different rates, heading different directions. And it's quite entertaining and interesting for us to see what's going to happen next. So that being the case, that they're all kind of diverging in their own ways, and they all have their own kind of specific trends, why don't we perhaps look at each one in turn? Let's start with LCDs. What are you thinking about that category right now? Where does it remain strong? What's exciting about it? Where are its growth opportunities? Good question. LCD, uh, I think, is going to remain a strong contender in the display technology for quite a while. If you look at the scale, the durability, and the cost of LCD, it lends itself to a lot of applications that the other technologies aren't always as strong at. So if you're going to be in a quick serve restaurant where it's going to be running constantly, or if you're in a travel application where it's running 24-7, the durability, the brightness, and the lower cost makes it an ideal product for those applications. Uh, we have tried to expand that application also by offering not only 16 by 9 formats, but also stretch formats so they can be used in a variety of physical applications. So uh, we'll talk about uh, LED in a moment, but just talking about that price point, you talk about LCD continuing to have a pretty attractive price point. Is that gap closing or is it still as though LCD is a significantly more economical investment for a lot of these verticals that might be looking to implement high quality displays? Good question. I think it depends on the scale of what you're trying to accomplish. So if you need a display that's physically the same size as an LCD, it's still a very cost effective, very durable alternative. As far as video walls go, a lot of video walls are composed, obviously, of LCD displays and some kind of a matrix or a grid, 8x8, 4x4, whatever the case is. Um, what are you seeing in terms of the large format video wall deployments where LCDs are deployed? Is there a lot of demand? Is there concern about you know, having bezels and lines on the screen, or is that something that a lot of clients are willing to work with if the price point is right? Yeah, that's a really good question because uh, I think we all have predictions and now we're seeing what the reality is. We were really surprised last year and even this year how much demand there still remains for the LCD video wall. Of course, you were, you're seeing transition from LCD video walls to LED. Everybody expected that. Everybody knew it. Everybody predicted it. And that's definitely happening. But the LED video wall obviously can scale at larger sizes without bezels, while the LCD is being used in a lot of applications where it's got an unusual aspect ratio. Well, they'll do rows of them or unique configurations. Uh, so again, they offer a low cost alternative at high brightness, high durability. And depending on the physical configuration, there is a surprising demand for LCD video walls yet. And of course, we all predicted that there's going to be a rapid increase in demand for LED. Mm -hmm. Just talking about some of those perhaps unusual sizes or orientations or shapes, are there particular verticals you would pinpoint where you're seeing that in particular, you know, whether it might be an unusual size or shape or configuration where LED is just the right choice and you're actually seeing quite a few deployments in those particular verticals? Well, LED, again, if you want to scale without bezels, so there were actually LCD video walls being deployed in meeting rooms with bezels in the middle, which I found fairly disruptive visually. Mm -hmm. So the, the video walls in the boardrooms and stuff have gone away for LCD, all gone to LED. Uh, as you go to larger scale displays where you can deal with a smaller, uh, excuse me, a larger dot pitch to keep the cost down at a large scale, those are obviously very strong for the LED market. 
where we see the LCD video wall still being used. A lot is like retail applications where they'll have a long ribbon or a long line of displays trying to wrap around. Uh, it can still be very cost effective and the bezels are not as disruptive visually. Mm -hmm. So let's go to LED, which we were talking a bit about so far, but let's kind of really home in on that. As you say, things tend to be moving in the direction of LED. I think statistically, if you look at it from you know, 19 to 20, 21, 22 and beyond, it's moving to a point where it's going to become if it had a plurality share, if not a majority share at some point. Um, can you talk about some of the factors driving us toward that? I mean, first of all, do you agree with that idea that it's moving inexorably toward a majority share? And if you do, what are what is driving that? So majority share is an interesting phrase to put in there. Uh, unquestionably, LED is the fastest growth right now. But if you look at what LEDs use for, we actually have 21 different families of LEDs and there's a variety of applications. So of course, cost being reduced is making them more appealing. As the dot pitch gets finer, that makes them more appealing. Uh, as you look at simplifying installation, we're doing lots of bundles and all-in-ones where somebody just wants a 16 by nine and order one SKU that comes with the bezels, with the mounts, with the displays, with the controller, with the power supply. We've greatly simplified the ability to purchase and install them. So installing has been getting a lot easier too. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that's obviously an important factor for commercial integrators audience. Obviously, we speak to the integration channel and they want to, I assume, and let me know if you disagree when you talk to your own integrator partners, but they want something that's relatively simple to deploy, that's not going to be incredibly time consuming. Um, do you find that this is really something that is making the technology ever more appealing to integrators themselves, that it's easier for them on the installation and integration side to use and deploy? Oh yeah, absolutely. Let me let me expand on that a little bit to answer your question in more detail. If you look at, of course, our all-in-ones and bundles we mentioned already, but we're also, we have launched a 54-inch cabinet. So you have much larger modules to install. There's less alignment, less time to do the install. It's easier to handle physically. If you look at our controller, our controller comes with a standard LG user interface. So if you've ever used an LG display, when you hit the menu, when you hit the selection, when you hit the settings, you're using an LG remote with an LG controller. So it is a very familiar experience. The jack pack looks the same too. So it's very easy to use. So a lot of the mystery, uh, maybe fear, uncertainty, and doubt, a lot of that's dissipated. So let's move to OLED, which is another really exciting kind of a category. Um, what is driving growth in that area? What I mean, if, I don't know if you can quantify the growth, but is it growing rapidly? Is it growing to your own expectations? And what is driving it, if so? All good questions. So the growth is almost still relevant because it's in the thousands of percentage because it's growing so quickly right now. If we were to compare LCD, LED, and OLED, OLED is still the king of video in terms of uh, color, color bandwidth, color breadth, color saturation, contrast ratios. Uh, it is still the king of all three technologies. And of course, we're comfortable saying that because we have all three to offer LCD, OLED, and OLED. With the OLED form factor, you also have a very thin form factor, which can be aesthetically pleasing if you're mounting it in an environment where the uh, maybe it's a corporate lobby or a corporate boardroom or a uh, museum where there was a lot of money spent on the architecture, the environment, the design, and you don't want to disrupt it as much. So in addition to the video quality we talked about, the form factor, low power consumption, it's also flexible. So we sell the display either in a fixed frame or we sell it in a flexible frame. So you can wrap it around a pillar, you can wrap it on a curved ceiling, you can wrap it around a curved wall. So the flexibility literally of the installation is also a prime attribute for OLED. So you mentioned, for example, that it is experiencing growth in the thousands of percent at this point, which means obviously that it's still in, in the relatively early stage of becoming a, a huge share of the market. Um, do you feel like it is destined to be a very large share of the market? And, and if so, why do you have confidence in that? Do you, are you getting feedback from the channel and from integrators saying that, you know, I might not have been aware of this before, but wow, how am I not deploying this in a whole lot more environments? 
when it comes to OLED and the installation and the number of environments, I think a lot of integrators are still becoming aware of what it's capable of. And when you have a chance to see its video performance. So if you look at integration also, the OLED has ability to apply itself in professional applications for content creation, broadcast, post-production, uh, video validation. There's a lot of environments where it's also going into those uh, where previously there was only an LCD option. And in those environments, because of its amazing video quality, you can actually do quite a bit with those displays. So the integrators, I think, are still figuring out where all it can be deployed, including that post-production content creation market and finding the ways to use it, in addition to the architectural integration and the appealing uh, physical format. Would you suggest any resources to integrators who want to learn more about OLED and how it can be deployed and how it's kind of the king in terms of, as you say, video display? If they want to learn more, they're like, well, you've whetted my appetite, but how do I learn more about this? Where would they go? So we have uh, recruited and hired a very large team over the past couple, three years of sales engineers that are exclusively there to help the integrators think through designs, help design installations. Matter of fact, we even do design formats, layouts, uh, renderings. So there's a lot of tools available with the LG sales engineer team. So LG obviously is, is a gold standard name in the display category. Everyone knows it. Um, from LG's unique perspective, can you share what makes you most excited about being in the display industry in 2022, headed into 2023? What gives you, when you walk into the office, what makes you excited to be working in the display category? Well, there's, it used to be maybe if you rewind, uh, let's say even five and eight years ago, certainly 10 years ago, there were a few models to choose from with analog inputs and it was just kind of a dumb display, right? Mm -hmm. Now you have computers integrated into them. You have the three different technologies to choose from. You have physical scale that you could never accomplish before. You have video quality that can never accomplish, you couldn't have accomplished before. And I think one of the most exciting things is uh, we're very excited about OLED performance, LCD, is a high volume, high durability, low cost solution. Uh, LED is of course very exciting to us. I mentioned earlier that we have 21 families of that. There are a lot of LCDs and OLEDs, but when it comes to LED, you actually have products that are designed for high salinity environments for cruise ships. You have products that are designed for extremely high performance and small dot pitch. So if you really need a high quality image, you have products that are fine pitch maybe for lobbies, you have larger pitch, you have products that are designed for outdoor. We have products that are designed for virtual uh, applications. So you know, if you're doing video as doing it as a backdrop on a video, we have products that are designed for cinema. Uh, we have a, a variety of applications. So LED itself, I think is the one that's expanding most in terms of breadth of offering and vertical applications are, I think they're, they're showing us new ways to do them every week. So I, I get excited about that category, I think quite a bit. Absolutely. Now, one of the things I think about displays in particular is that you really can only appreciate what they can do when you experience them close up, when you see them, you experience the brightness, you experience the sharpness, just the image itself. So if people want to check out some of LG's latest wares, new products, technologies across LED, LCD, OLED, are there shows or industry events where people are going to want to check out your booth or your display in the months upcoming? Well, keep in mind for the viewers that are watching this, we're recording this on March 24th. The pandemic is appearing to start to you know, slow down. Uh, we do have a innovation center that we've built in Los Angeles. We are refreshing our Chicago Innovation Center. We are planning on attending Infocom. We're not sure what all products we'll have there and what the current conditions uh, for the medical environment will allow us to do. Also in New Jersey, in our headquarters, right across the river from Manhattan, we are building up a large uh, demo center there as well and enhancing our Atlanta demo center. So <clears throat> also uh, in DC, we've worked a lot with the National Association of Broadcasters and their facility has a lot of LG products which are also available for viewing. So you're right, it is a video, uh, it's a video technology which is a visual technology which you really have to see to appreciate. And with all the new technologies, I think we've all seen a 16 by nine LCD. I don't know if we need to see much more of that. Most of us have seen OLED. So I think the real excitement is brewing around uh, the LED products. But <clears throat> I haven't mentioned so far a couple other exciting things that are really starting to take off are transparent products. So we have a transparent LED that's designed to attach to a window. We have a transparent OLED 
that uh, you can actually look through and view. And the, the growth in those, of course, are thousands of percentages too, because they're small markets. But the applications are really interesting. It gives the customer and the integrator a unique solution. So when you ask the original question about excitement, I think uh, the expansion of LED, the transparent LED, the transparent OLED, and the continuation of the high volume with LCD and the unique applications of the extremely high video performance OLED, those things all kind of make a really a rich environment for uh, new ideas. Absolutely. And just as far as the transparent element goes, are there particular applications you might want to cite as being exemplars of how it can be put to terrific use? Well, we see a lot of retail applications where they'll put a transparent screen in front of a product so to get the attention of a customer and maybe explain some of the, the, the product to the customer. Uh, we also see some preliminary designs of people installing those in front of teller windows, in front of ticket windows. Uh, if you do happen to visit the NAB Center, you'll actually see a two by three grid of them. And in the background is this, the nation's capital. So you can see video in the foreground. You can see the real capital in the uh, background behind them. So I think the ideas are still developing and they're getting exciting. And each time I see one, uh, we even have them on sets of some TV shows, which I don't know if I'm able to mention the TV show for that very futuristic looking command and control, like a bridge maybe on a ship. So I, I, I think the application are exciting to people that enjoy the technology like you and I. Absolutely. So is there anything I might not have asked you or given you the chance to talk about that you would like to discuss? That's my journalism 101 question. I'd hate to leave you without <laughs> talking about something you'd love to discuss. Well, I, I think as we talked, uh, you said, what's, what's really changing and interesting? And I said, originally, the displays were kind of simple, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now we have computers built into them. Now we have multiple technologies. The other thing that's changed because of the complexity and the technologies, we have expanded our engineering team to where our engineering team is almost the exact same size as our sales team. Mm -hmm. So we really encourage the integrators, if they have ideas, if they have questions, to talk to our engineering team. Because... The amount of products available, the variety of products available. Again, we talk about maybe LED, right? There's 21 families. What are you trying to accomplish? Which is the right family from it? How do you engineer it? What are the options? What do you look for performance? What do you look for for cost? How do you do the curved OLED? LCD, you know, where do I use that in that application? I, I think being able to talk to an engineer, because even myself, Working at LG, you have a hard time keeping track of all the products. Plus, we have integrated computers in them now. We have management software. We have warranty options. We have remote management capabilities. So the design part is far more critical today than it was five or eight years ago. And I'm really proud of our engineering team and their ability to assist with that design. Well, kudos to them. And thank you so much, Dan, for taking some time to chat with me and with Commercial Integrators audience. I really appreciate you investing the time to apprise us about the latest developments in displays and what LG is doing to be at the vanguard of it. We're excited about the future and thank you for spending time with us. So once again, thank you uh, to Dan Smith, who is Vice President of Business Development for LG Business Solutions USA for joining us. My name is Dan Farisi, Editor-in-Chief of Commercial Integrator, and please check back on Commercial Integrator's website for more great content just like this. Thank you.